This is uh, Masfin Tawalda and uh, this is just to show you the steps how to run um, a Hecras uh, model using a real data in um, um, using a real data of a river called uh, Air, La Air which is located in uh, Geneva. So let's start. This is Hecras model. Okay, um, this is a bit different from the previous one because the file format is different. That's not in Excel, it is in a Hercras model itself. So let us first, um, unit system is okay, international. Then um, open a new project. Let's call that new project um, La. La Air, it's, uh, they call it La Air, so La Air, okay, so we have created a project, now we need the data, yeah, the data is, I mean, geometrical data and uh, also hydrological data, first let us fetch, import, the uh, import the hydrologic data, here it is. We can um, import it from here. Mm. Okay, this is here. Okay. Then um, SI unit finished importing. So we have imported the data. Uh, this is just the plan of the, the river. Uh, you can see the first uh, segment of the river um, is um, um, will pass through a tunnel, and the other part of uh, the river is just normal natural river, natural river. So it's just a mindering natural river and the length of uh, it is 5.36 kilometer so that's it um, so 
we have already imported we can see some of the this the cross sections here yes uh, although the cross section need uh, a bit of modification it means we need all the correction this the levies and also the bank stations must be in uh, in order um, and the other thing which we have to consider is that you can see we can zoom it you see for example here is the cross section and there are bridges along the cross section also but you can see some of the cross section lines cut the river three or two times you see you can see for example here this cross section cut the river um, three times it cuts three times one here the other two here here to second and the third one here so this implies that and the the the, the cross section is is intended to be to be here the, the cross section represent um here the section of this part of the river so it's wrong to have the cross section of this one and this one by the side of this one because Hecras assumes that it is just like they are in the same plane and um, and and by the side of each other and whenever the the river um, you see uh, becomes full uh, the over -top topping flood may um, go to the other one or also uh, the Hecras assume also whenever um, the water level in one of the river uh, channel is um, has has a certain level then it also share into the other part of the uh, channel also but it is impossible uh, practically it is impossible to um, to connect this part of the river with this one it means they are very very um, apart and also water can't come to to the upstream side you see it's very uh, difficult so we have to indicate this uh, in the software for example we can see 4132 um, see in the cross sections we, are, we can see 4132 um, 4132 you can see here here see this one is a real river but we have this cross sections you see so when the the, the software calculates when the level reach to this uh, level then it will also fill this one as well but in reality this doesn't exist or uh, the, it will be wrong anyway so we have to uh, do something for, for example we have to use this levy for, we, to to inform to the software that uh, the water must not go can't overtop this one and also there is another way of telling the uh, ad block ineffective areas like we add ineffective areas like this so this one is ineffective you see although when the water fills up to this, up to this level or above the height of this thing the elevation of this uh, um, ineffective area line then it may um, use again this place this uh, canal as a flowing uh, as a stream but uh, we can make this one permanent so it will never ever uh, fill mm. this is one uh, information i have to give and the other is that um let us see i mean the tunnel part you see has some leads so we need to put leads this means this is a superstructure which covers the tunnel part of the river so we have to put the, the structure here so that the software understand uh, the height and uh, everything you see it's just an information and um, to put 
leads you, you can uh, add leads and you see you just uh, check the elevations if you make this elevation four for example um, it will change you see it's up on so we, we just give maximum and minimum and the, the station point so it will create for us by itself as the other is horizontal variation in n value the variation in in n value if you if you click this thing out you see it's all the n values disappeared so it generally gives n value 0 point for left bank and no bank so uh, it, it is advantageous to put this thing because whenever you put this 0, 0.0 to here the consecutive points also assume the same value and also this one uh, so it will be it will be okay to put like this so as the other thing and obstructions also there is also obstruction in this tunnel somewhere else uh, see so we have to we have to tell to the you see this is an obstruction this is oh, it's obstruction it's just a block uh, it's a section that is blocked for to a certain level so we have to inform to the, the software that uh, there is an obstruction you see so we just uh, say we'll put this thing it's very simple the same as the leads so that's it this is the information we have for the cross sections and also always the cross section need to have for example um, this point the stations needs to be moved to to a point where the bank stations are you see like this you see this is a bank station if we assume this is a bank station we can put this one as a bank station and this one we have to move it to here this because these are levees levees are you see water can't flow above levees so so that's levees and for another other cross section we can see you see we, we can put for example this levees like this and also the the ineffective area tools also uh, can be can be used also uh, these are the bankers uh, to indicate the bank is good because later it it uh, it tells that whenever there is a uh, overtopping um so we an automatically understand there is a there will be a danger inundation so if there are structures along the side of the river then those structures must be considered in a, a design you see so these are the most important parts in dealing with this with the cross sections so um, so um, that's all that's all um, we can run the, the the software after adjusting each point of each cross section the cross section you see you can see a lot of cross sections here around 200 cross sections so each of them needs to be uh, adjusted you see the bank station uh, the levees and so on and also the other is uh, in the tunnel it is very difficult to to survey so uh, there is a need to have uh, other matter of uh, putting many many cross sections in the tunnel part for example by taking in meters or uh, in a G using gps and so on um, we can uh, take two points and we can interpolate the other part of um, the tunnel from those points which we have measured you see so the asterisk here indicate that the the inter interpolation uh, th that is a, a value interpolated it means so that's it it is easy to interpolate between two points for example we can do uh, interpolation here like this um, between two x cross section for example between five and between this station and the next station is um, 5313.66 the, their distance is 25 if you want to have a 10 um, meter distance uh, cross-section then we can put 
10 and just uh, interpolate so we have now four uh, cross section along uh, the ridge so that's how we can interpolate between two two surveyed um, stations um, the other thing is no there is nothing uh, important now to run the this um, model so we need an we need the the bridge okay we need those bridges must be in a proper order for example the decks you see we need the decks the high cord is the uh, top part of the deck and the low cord is uh, this uh, the lower part of the, the deck it's very important to put all these things into the the river because whenever uh, the flood or the level of the flood um, uh, becomes above the low cord of the uh, deck the bridge the bridge then it it, it assumes a, a wheel flow you see so it uses uh, your flow calculations so we have to put some of the for example minimum wheel flow is this one so this is uh, three na three eight three eight nine three eight nine point uh, ninety eight I think so um, the type of the weir is um, weir crest shape is broad crested because the deck of uh, bridges broad crested uh, the width is five and weir coefficient is 2.6 minimum is it is preferable to use then this is 0 0.1 it means the distance between the up the cross section which is found immediate upstream of the, the cross section so that is mostly it's one meter something like that but you can you, it depends upon the distance which uh, you put so 0 0.1 is 10 centimeters it means so it means there is another cross section which is 10 centimeters above the bridge yeah so that's all this is um, the bridge um, if you want to have piers in the bridge you can put piers also here for example you can take a deck uh, elevation 392 let me take this is 392 and the lower one is 389 so we can put 389 uh, and 3 how much it, is? it was 392 392 let us let, and the pier width 1.5 let it be like that then 1.25 if the width of the wheel is the same uh, from the bottom up to the top then if the, uh, the downstream side of the uh, pier is also similar then copy and then we can put the pier in uh, central line station because you see this is a negative the the the, the the left side is negative and uh, positive so they just did the cross section as a center line is zero so we can put a zero we can say zero zero okay we have a p you can say the mean you see yeah we have a p you see we can put a p but because we decreed some points here it just uh, there is a gap here but we can we can make it up to the bottom of the deck so it's possible if we have sloping abutment we can the sloping abutment is an, uh, an abutment which is formed by the side of the two um, the, the the bridge um, sides you see left and right side so that is an abutment if we have an abutment we can put it so if you don't have, we don't have. Say in this case, we don't have an abutment, but it is the same as we uh, we did uh, to the piers. We can put length, elevation, something like that, and the station point. If we have a calvert, we also put calvert. We just uh, give a station and uh, all diameters and so on, and edge uh, parameters. This is just a storage elevation curve. So if we need uh, to have a storage elevation curve at the bridge, we can have uh, we can put that. Thing. So we have uh, almost five uh, bridges along the 
uh, along the river or along the segment you see we are considering that is the river air um, that's it so uh, we can um, now continue um, we can we we'll have to save everything you see after correcting uh, uh, everything and we put geometry of air we can put a name can give a name and um, yes it's finished now we have finished now we need what we need hydrological data for the hydrological data we can see um see we have hydrological data and uh, see in a recurrence interval you see for example a 10 year recurrence interval 30 year uh, and 100 and 300 years so david crew sentinels tricentennial it means uh, q 300 and uh, david crew um, sentinel means uh, 100 years it means trentennial and this this channel is 10 so you see uh, uh, along the river uh, there is a construction and uh, before the construction it means avant troisième meetup means before the construction and uh, after troisième meetup so after the construction let us see after the construction after they constructed a diversion structure i will show you in a moment um, the um, in a photo or in a video and the area where they are constructing and what they are doing so um we will come to that but this is the discharge that is calculated um, at um, a certain point for example at the outer root bridge it is 63 um, they have recorded it for many many years so it all it is also possible uh, to just calculate using a runoff uh, it's a calculation this is catchment studies you see curve number and so on but in Switzerland they just do uh, measures each day automatic manual everything so uh, it's sure that you can take from the um, from the data recorded data as well so it's 33 for Pont de Mare and Pont, Pont Rouge also 42 that is for Q10 so uh, five kilometer is around Pont de Mare so we will take 33 and 42 it means 33 if it is 33 upon the mare there is an augmentation there is an increase at Pont Rouge we'll see where Pont Rouge is Pont Rouge is just as the tunnel as the yes just an entrance to the tunnel so at just around the entrance to the tunnel the the crew the the flood will increase into 42 meter cube per second um, it was 33 before at the Pont de Maris uh, because of the uh, tributaries affluences and the other additional flows it increases to 42 it's obvious then um, 36 after a transient meetup it becomes 36 um, 45 then the 30 this is Q30 the other Q39 Q4 I mean Q139 and Q100 again at point which 48 here 46 and 40 56 is maximum at point which for 300 uh, years of recurrence interval so uh, we will see whether the this the the tunnel uh, will accommodate or not for the 56 meter cube per second discharge so we'll see um okay that's all that's all about so uh, now before we are going to do um, the the uh, adding hydrological data it's better to have um, to take some um, geometry i mean a corrected geometry from other five which are which i have done before so um, let me close this one and uh, add uh, data which i have uh, done before mm. okay let me exit 
Mm. Okay, open a project. That project is yes. Uh, I just put it in here in the desktop. This is upper trusm. Upper the construction of upper. It means after the construction of uh, the third step of uh, word structure. As you see now, uh, I've already put the hydrological uh, data. I can show hydrology you see at point demaris uh, 5,363.91 kilometer um, meter the discharge are already uh, entered this is very simple you can put this sort for 34 or 33 just click and put the data and here also we can click and for for the first point we can add a flow change location we can add one and it will uh, make you see for example you can add for example we can add um, let us add one another put add you see i have already add one and if we don't want it we can delete it out yeah um let me Delete, see, I can delete that one. Mm, no. Delete it all from the tab. I can delete this one. So it's already deleted. Now we put four because we have four types of recurrence intervals. That means for Q10, Q13, and so on, KMC300. That is a name. We can change the names. Um, just edit profile name and change these names like this. So it's very easy. We you can see the previous uh, video that shows every step. And uh, rich boundary condition is now for a normal devs. Uh, we, we just click here and put the slope slope of uh, energy line grid line uh, the slope is the uh, realistic 0, 0, 4, 2. You, we, you just we can take the slope from from the ground surface that is vertical increase to horizontal increase the deviation point are yeah, two different point I mean the distance horizontal distance and the the difference in, in elevation will give the the slope uh, we can take average 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 slopes so it is it's realistic you see in a, a natural river uh, most most rivers do very very um, low slope value because natural levers are always um, becoming becoming stable you see they are always striving to become stable it means uh, they keep um, themselves in a, in a balanced balanced state for example you can see if the water flows in an area where very big big um, or wide um, surface area then the flow decreases and the velocity decreases that means because of the decrease in velocity um, some of the sediment which is carried from the upstream will be dumped to this area because the flow is less and the water flows gently then through long time through long process then those dumped um, um, sediment used to make uh, this side bank and so on and it becomes slowly narrower narrower and narrower then um, it until until it forms a velocity uh, called an unscouring and then silting velocity so as the same when there is um, a narrower uh, surface area um, or river channel for the discharge the, the discharge also because of the narrow uh, space the velocity increases and through time it erodes some of uh, the, the parts of the berm or the banks then 
slowly it becomes wider until the velocity becomes an unscouring and unsilting velocity. This is very, very interesting for natural rivers and nature is intelligent. They are just themselves. So they are always in balance. Because of this, the slope is always a very, very gentle slope. That is, the slope itself is a non-scouring and non-silting non slope that supports the velocity as well. So most of the rivers in, in irrigation canals, in designing irrigation canals, the slope is very, very low, 0 0.025. 0 0.05 something like that so we are in a, in a range that is acceptable for the natural river so it's okay and we put click here we put we click here and put then okay then after that we up, click apply data and then save the plan save we save the plan with flow data okay now we have saved the flow data a pretrasm step we have uh, downstream um, marriage the project name and um, we have uh, the geometry air 2 that is which i have taken before um, and this one is a steady flow operator uh, um, step for calculation the steady flow you can you can calculate now because we have already first of all we have to create uh, open a plan and then we save it, you see. We open a plan and save so that let's compute now. It's already because we have done everything. Okay, now we are successful in our computation. If there is something wrong in our calculation or if there is any problem in the cross section and so on, it will stop us. But we are now fine, it's fine, so we can save our plan and finish our calculation so as a final the final step is the looking at the cross section at the longitudinal section you can see five of the the bridge and the tunnel also and we can see at the hundred for example at q 300 at q 300 still the flood um, can pass through the tunnel so it is very a successful uh, um, project because 56 is accommodated in the tunnel so if it is beyond 56 it means for example 60 70 or something like that it has to be div diverted it must be diverted by any means otherwise it will overtop here and it is a city around here a village a petty land sea i think so it this part of the, the village will be inundated it's very difficult um so this is now a success is very good so we are sure that we don't have any problem in the future uh, as far as we have um, an upstream um, mechanism to decrease the flow or create a temporary detention dam you see we can create a temporary detention dam or a diversion i can i can show the um, diversion the they did okay let me let me put um here yeah, for example here this these are the pictures uh, okay this is just uh, a picture which i have taken um after a rainy day you see you can see damage some damage um, you can see here the structure okay they have done a structure this is the the outer route where the discharge is uh, 60 so we are calculating below below the this one so you see the, this is a water structure this is this is the natural flow of the river here the water flows this way whenever the amount of discharge is more than the capacity of this natural canal it goes or it flows all over the the wheel and it will be diverted and diverted 
and we'll go to 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 a river called Arva. See, we'll see that in a moment. This is the structure. You see in Cesara the build structure. This is called a biological method of stabilizing a, a berm. So it's very very interesting to have. This is just simply a tissue and it will be it's just for temporary stabilizing the plants and then so on after that it has no further use the plant themselves will take take care of the the berm yeah this one is you see the river mm. we can see like this mm. this is the outer roots below the outer roots Okay, this is above the outer roots. Um, okay, this is a bridge, newly constructed bridge. Mm, this is outer roots. Yeah, regional de la air, troisième tapis. Tronçon aval, pont de l'oule, pont de marée. Yeah. Okay. Okay, this is a diversion. Um, this this one is an old diversion. Now it is almost filled by. A, a sediment but this one is um, a new one and they um, they built a tunnel um, to the earth this is an ojai type of um, weir you see this is all the uh, diversion structure it comes through this and it goes like that mm. i think they have done um, th this this was um, all the um, natural river channel but they diverted artificially they created a, a another channel so that it will be good for them to make um, another tunnel i think this one is the tunnel itself you see mm, this is the tunnel structure yeah this is um, this is uh, the natural level itself it comes like this and it goes like this yeah so we are considering below this um, um, this place okay that's all um, some of the river we can see um, we can see for example Pont Rouge Pont Rouge is here for example we can see you see this is a petty land see if the, the the flood field I mean if the discharge amount of the coming flood is more than 56 for example it will increase you see it will uh, it will inundate this area it means so it's very difficult this is this is Pont Rouge and uh, yeah these are some of the uh, some of the this is a photo which is which has been taken after a rainy day this is uh, Pont Centenaire uh, Pont Centenaire see this is Shema uh, du Pont du Centenaire so Pua du Centenia is, is the name of this bridge so we are we we did our calculation below this level you see yeah 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 these are some of um, um gabion structure it's an old gabion structure you see most of the time rivers you see when they just make a curve they erode the curve part of the river and accumulate the inside part of the curve you see the one which is the convex part they just erode the conve concave part into the convex part you see so because of the vortex movement of the flow you see the sediment uh, eroded from one side into the other side this is um, happens in natural rivers so it's good to have protection like this gabion you see um they have also uh, this is yeah 
this is the natural is the, the river banks covered with the forest so you can see how we chose to have um n value 0 0.14 the banks and for the riverbed we have taken 0 0.05 mm. yeah this is you see a damaged bank so it's always like that there is oh you see because of the nature of the river they erode this part and accumulate to this side it's always like that the curve is going like this the convex part you see and this is a, this is the convex part oh no 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 they have to they they, they erode from this side and accumulate this side actually this one is and the upstream side is like this so we can see uh, yeah yes you see they erode from this side and accumulate this one so this is the upstream side of the mobs so it's eroded a, a, a tree and you can see this part of uh, the bank is still uh, vulnerable to more erosion and it needs to be protected yeah yeah that's that because if it is not protected it will make a lot of damage it, it may even change the route of the river as well we can see as a protection like uh, like um, this one for example this is uh, you, you can see this protection you see this is a, another biological uh, way of protecting the river I see here you can see it is they have already um, built a, a wood structure here because when the water comes here you see this curve you see concave curve it makes a vortex movement so that the water will store here the the sediment will store more sediment store here eroded from here store here eroded from here store here so through time the river might change its course like this and it may damage this tree and there is an asphalted uh, route here it will be dangerous for the route itself so instead what we have to do is protect this side this cuff with a structure this is, this is cheap because of this natural here available instead of using cement and uh, other expensive things it would be preferable to use some woods and so on so this is all about the the, the river and uh, uh, the our calculation results we can see some of um, our calculation results like this uh, this is the plan of the river and for the 300 it means for you see you can see the profiles yeah for all of them actually but we can clear here and put only for 300 just to see for 300 you can see q300 you can see some of the areas are um, widely affected some of the area has because of the levees it's protected even if the flood increases but there are some areas very the banks are very low so that the flood can overtop you see and affect the surrounding area if there is um some okay we can put this thing uh, in, uh, in, uh, okay okay you see you can see you can see here this is the levees and the bank stations so you can see clearly now this part and this part and this part are inundated so it's very very important to take care of all these areas and um, take some measures now that is the the recommendations i have um, so that's all about the running class model in in um, 
in la air, the river air. Mm, the other important aspect of uh, river air, we can see some of, for example, the the catchment area. For example, this is a catchment area of air. The river comes from the its tributaries from France, and uh, then the red point that is Geneva. This is a territory of Geneva, and uh, it flows down to to the city, center city, to Confignon, Lancy, and so on. And as you see, there is a structure here that the one which we saw. Uh, this is a tunnel to reduce the size of the flood, which is uh, flowing directly into the river Arve. So by reducing, you see, they divert here some of the flood into directly into the river through a tunnel, through that Ojai um, weir. And these are some other flows like uh, sewerage and so on, which mix to the to with the river. So these are the explanation about the river. And uh, this is a point where the Pont Rouge is uh, located and after that it becomes uh, so you can see the dotted dotted indicates that it is a tunnel underground um, the other is that which I want to show is you can you can pick uh, some of the uh, you can pick some of the um, the n values from a table you can see uh, th these are in french but you can see item 4 is similar to 4 avec ps with a stone uh, so we, we chose 0 0.1 and uh, n value um, k means 1 over n it means k is the length of um, the roughness the height of the roughness is a measurement you see in micro millimeter or something so one over k gives you an n value that's that's all about we can choose k we can take directly k or n also so it's possible to take both for this is for natural uh, water and this one is for artificial canals so yeah this is how we chose them um, the, the that's separate you see for the banks the banks are full of uh, trees and the the riverbed is is just like a, um it's, it's, it's a boulders you see very small boulders so that's why it's the, the end value is low 0 0.5 um the other um, is um Maybe the um, also I think that's all we can see the the um, video from the online also the video of the river itself so that's all merci for uh, thank you for listening and I think it is uh, profitable so I hope uh, we'll come some other time with another problems also. Thank you. Cheers.